For more now, Lena Mohammed from the Islamic Human Rights Commission is joining us over the phone from London. Lena, thank you for joining us. Um, once again, the hijab is uh, in the spotlight in France. We know that French President François Hollande said that while French needs, France needs to be a secular country, then th they shouldn't really forget religion. Where does religious tolerance sit here with this whole idea of freedom of expression in France? Well, France has uh, repeatedly legislated on... Um, on symbols like the hijab. There's a very contentious um, history in France between secularism and religion. Um, I mean, religious, religious freedom very much comes secondary to upholding this um, constitutional idea of secularism, which um, France polices very rigidly. And do you think that some of this talk that we've been hearing from Sarkozy's party, for example, is just some sort of political pandering to gain those uh, party members or those uh, electorates who are actually shifting towards the, the far-right National Front Party? Well, I think that's exactly right. It, it seems that in light, these politicians are capitalising on the Charlie Hebdo um, incident um, where there has been an, a, a huge um, anti-Muslim rush following that. Um, and so a lot of politicians, and we see this across, this happening across Europe as well, where politicians capitalize this, they find a minority group, and Muslims have always been a, um, a, a very useful scapegoat in this. They've, um, they identify um, the Muslim minority as a scapegoat for a lot of Europe's ills. Um, and they see that this is gaining traction amongst the electorate, particularly as you identify with a shift um, towards the far right. So Marine Le Pen has been increasingly vocal um, about about the need to legislate against uh, symbols like the hijab in increasingly public spaces. And so it seems like uh, a, a lot of um, sort of uh, centre politicians are following suit as well because that seems to be where the electorate is going. We see that in the UK as well with UKIP having increasingly um, anti-Muslim sentiment and centre parties following suit as well. Um, saying that though, um, while it does seem to be um, sort of electoral pandering, there is a precedent in France for, um, for the country to legislate against the hijab. So we know that it's banned in, in schools and then also um, in the workplace for those pro uh, providing public service. So it, it's not Yes. Um, unreasonable to think that this could lead um, France down an even more dangerous path, uh, particularly for its mus Muslim populace. And, and as we know, France does have the largest Muslim community yeah. across Europe. What impact do you think talks such as this, that they want to ban, for example, hijab in, in universities and public spaces, what impact do you think this is going to have on the Muslim communities and do you think this could cause some sort of a disintegration of communities in, in, in the country? Well, I mean, it's it's nothing new. I think that um, the Muslim communities. I mean, we we speak about um, a sort of homogenous community, but it's certainly it's certainly not that. These are very sort of complex um, community groups. But mus Muslims in France, five million of them, have taken a battering um, recently, but also historically in France, they have always been seen as the outsider, and this is just another. Um, this is just more rhetoric to add to that. Um, it can only, um, I mean, this is just an example of it getting worse, um, which, will, um, which will lead to increased racial and religious tension within France, particularly um, within Paris, within the Bonlieus. And it, it's difficult to predict what could happen, but um, certainly nothing good can come out of it. Okay, thank you very much, Lina Mohammed from the Islamic Human Rights Commission, joining us over the phone from London.